This is J.D. Doyle, and Leaping Lesbians will start off Part 6 of Queer Music History 101, a very important segment on the women's music movement. Part 6 picks up the story in the early 70s, and I open with Sue Fink, and her song Leaping Lesbians was from 1977. It was not the first song that I would classify as part of the women's music movement, but perhaps the best one to use as an ear-catching opener. This segment will include more songs of this genre than any other I'll feature, because, plain and simple, I consider the women's music movement as the most important musically for our community. But I need to go back to the beginning with Alex Dopkin. In 1973, she formed her own record label called Women's Waxworks and released the first album entirely produced, engineered, financed, and performed by lesbians. It was called Lavender Jane Loves Women. From it is the song A Woman's Love. She's a woman, I didn't think I loved her So unexpected, we just stood and smiled And I felt so fine And it was a right inside But how could I know After you heard Alex Dobkin, I jumped right into the catalog of Olivia Records, the, I think, most important record label in our music history. It came along not only when there was a real need, but it did it with exquisite talent. That song was called Woman Loving Woman and was from Teresa Troll's 1977 album, The Ways a Woman Can Be. But the label really started in 1974 with its two main early talents, 
Chris Williamson and Meg Christian. Meg's album, I Know You Know, came first, and while she was more known for sensitive ballads, her song, Ode to a Gym Teacher, struck a real chord with her audiences and became a classic. She was a big, tough woman, the first to come along, that showed me being female meant you still could be strong, and though graduation meant that we had to part, she'll always be a player on the ball. Notepad and I inked it on my dress And I etched it on my locker And I carved it on my desk And I painted big red hearts With her initials on my books And I never knew till later Why I got those funny looks She was a big type of woman The first to come along That showed me being female We had to part. She'll always be a player on the ball field of my heart. Sweet woman, rise inside my glow. I think I'm missing. After May Christian came Chris Williamson, and her album The Changer and the Changed made history, not only for the unprecedented huge sales for a release on an independent label, but for how it reached the listeners, with songs like Waterfall and the one you heard, Sweet Woman. And that set finished with an artist who is still a major contributor to our music, Holly Near. The song Imagine My Surprise came from her 1978 album by that title, on her own label, Redwood Records, and the second voice you heard on it was by Meg Christian. Olivia Records lasted until about 1993, when Olivia morphed into a cruise line, but I think another important contribution of theirs was to release, in 1977, the first various artists album of lesbian music. It was called Lesbian Concentrate, and was kind of a reaction to the Anita Bryant bigotry brigade of those times. On the album, Olivia included their own artists, but also some from albums the label distributed, like one by the Berkeley Women's Music Collective, and their song, Gay and Proud. I was born a bastard, you know my mother well, she couldn't keep me, sent me off to foster home, where they try to teach me, that girls can't go. Where do we go to after 
straight But when it comes to choosing a mate I vote for your rights and that's so fine What have you done to fight for mine? Where do we go to after liberation? Is this a really our salvation? Building a road to a lesbian nation Or leading back to isolation? I played those last two to remind ourselves that women's music in the mid-70s was not solely the product of American artists. Lesbian Nation was by the Lavender Blues from 1978 and they were from Australia. That song was talking about the rift in the women's movement between straight women and lesbians, which did not only happen in the U.S. And in 1975, the Flying Lesbians released their album by that same name in Germany. Three of the ten tracks were in English, including sort of a recruiting song, I'm a Lesbian, How About You? Of course, there were many, and I mean many, more artists I could say up with before we leave this segment on women's music. But there is one I can't leave out. Maxine Feldman's historic 45 RPM record came out in 1972, and it took her until 1979 before she was able to release a full album. That album was called Closet Sale, and on it was an anthem that is still sung every year at the Michigan Women's Music Festival. The song is Amazon. Amazon, women rise. Amazon, women weaving rainbows in the sky. Amazon women fly Amazon women fly I am and once was called Amazon Now I am Lesbian I know that the matriarchy Grew back then Sisters the matriarchy's Gonna rule again Amazon women And here's your essay question assignment for this part. In the early 70s, there was a strong women's music movement, but there was not, and still hasn't been, a men's music movement. Why not? And what made the movement for women so strong? And why was this so important? Next time, I'll bring you a ch-ch-change in pace with David Bowie. <laughs> 